In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate a multiple regression analysis. I'm going to be looking at stats exams predictions. So, you know, score, we're trying to predict stats exams, statistics exam scores. And we're going to use math aptitude and English aptitude, or math test and English test, as our predictive variables. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, analyze regression linear. And let me just go ahead and reset this so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to put math aptitude as a predictive variable and English aptitude as a predictive variable. And then I'm going to put my criterion variable as the stat exam score. And now I'm going to go to plots. And I'm going to use plots to evaluate my model assumptions. I can evaluate uh, normality through a normal probability plot. And I can evaluate homoscedacity by taking my, my, my standardized predictor variables and putting them on the X and my standardized residual variables and putting them on the Y. Then when I go to uh, statistics here, I'm going to ask for descriptives. I'm going to ask for partial and, uh, part and partial correlations and collinearity diagnostics. I'm going to hit continue and OK. So something to notice here is that uh, both of my uh, uh, math aptitude and English aptitude are both uh, statistically significant uh, Pearson R correlations, 0.48 and 0.20 respectively. Um, and so these are statistically significant correlations, somewhat indicative of, of linearity. My model is also statistically significant. F of 297 equals 16.63. P is less than 0.05. And so uh, I'm accounting for almost 26% of the variance in the model. When I look at my uh, predictor variables, I can see that math aptitude is a statistically significant predictor, but English aptitude is not. And when you go and you square this part correlation, so uh, 0.463 uh, squared, tells me that 21.4% of the unique amount of variance in the model is accounted for by math aptitude. Now keep in mind, we only accounted for 26% of the variance, or 25.5, and 21.4% is uniquely brought in by math aptitude. Notice that uh, English aptitude, 0.145, when I square that value, it brings in about 2% of the unique variance in the model, not very much. Another element that you want to look at here is we, we, we ran our normal probability test, and you can see that we're pretty close to a normal uh, distribution, uh, you know, to meeting the normality assumption, and that the uh, uh, residuals, the error scores, are normally distributed um, uh, across uh, the dependent variable. What you'll also notice is a fairly randomization of, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, standardized residuals. And um, since there's no distinct pattern, we can say that uh, the homoscedacity assumption holds. It's not being violated. If there was a distinct pattern, we might suggest uh, heteroscedacity would be evident then. Very often when you see a, a conical pattern in the data, uh, that represents uh, uh, heteroscedacity or a violation of the assumption. And so that's all there is to it in, uh, uh, in uh, conducting a, a multiple regression analysis in SPSS. We have our statistical significance of the model, our practical significance of the model, our statistical significance of each predictor variable, right? and then our practical significance of each predictor variable when we square the part correlation.